Michael has asked me to demonstrate um, an example of what my approach is to musical phrasing and sound production. So what I would like to do is demonstrate the solo from Scheherazade that you all know so well and examine some of the pitfalls, some of the things that I practice when I'm preparing for this solo and things that I uh, caution my students about. Um, one thing that I hear often from students, and in fact I hear from myself when I play the thing cold after not having done it for a couple of years, is in the opening, the up interval is not as beautiful as the down interval. So uh, we would get something like this. So uh, the first thing I tell my students to practice and practice myself is getting the most beautiful melting quality when you come back to the high note. And in tempo. And the next issue is getting the exact right length of the D followed by the B. And for that you have to have the right kind of control over the reed that it starts and stops exactly when you want it to. Those are a little, little short of those notes as you can see. Now here's an, another similar pitfall. One hears often enough where that heavily articulated C sharp, because that note is, is supposed to be articulated, people often articulate it too strongly. So I give this exercise to my students of going over and over again this. how the last C sharp of these little fragments is still articulated but articulated in the natural phrasing way where the D is the note that has a little bit more intensity and the C sharp is a resolved note. So it's very difficult to articulate a note that's actually a resolution. You have to work on it for a long time. But then the phrase has much more direction. <laughs> And here's another issue, getting from that C sharp to the B. It's a similar thing. The B has to be articulated, and coming from the C sharp, it's very hard not to make a thudding sound. So we practice over and over again. trick for that. Um, when I'm finished with the C-sharp key, I go to the A key a little tiny bit to get the B. I know A is not the ideal vent key for a B, but it's enough so that you can make the connection, make the articulation, and know that the B will speak clearly. Be sure you start the B softly, both when you're beginning the crescendo and later on when you're moving on to the second half. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the vigorous section where um, we up the tempo a little and play a little bit marcato, and then immediately back into a melting legato. The next section, I feel uh, it in one. Um, the two phrases are similar, sort of mirror images of one another, and I view it as if you're looking at a sculpture and the high part of the phrase is looking at the sunny side of the sculpture and the low part of the phrase is looking at the shadow side of the sculpture. And 
then a repeat of that with, with more expression. <laughs> And then the next one, where we all like to take the G that follows and, and stretch it out and be very expressive on it, and then an A that's even more intense than the G before we finish it, um, the, um, the two E F sharps, um, one has to make a little bit of retard to set up the G. And I have a, a special way that I like to think of that. I think of it in two tempos. The first E F sharp is in the regular tempo, and the second E F sharp is in a slightly slower tempo. This is not exactly the same as a retard, where every note is slower than the last. Then after the intense notes, coming down to the E natural, it's very hard not to over-intensify the E natural, but I like to think of the E natural as um, a, a pond with no ripples, um, most of the way down to the lowest dynamic. There's more dim after that, but I, I, I don't put too much intensity into the E. Now I'll try to put it all together for you.